So is LinkedIn Sales Navigator actually worth investing in? Yes, it is. But only if you have an effective and repeatable way to get prospects talking with you. Here's my quick review to help you decide. And some of this you've probably not heard before. Okay, let's keep it real. Sales Navigator and premium accounts buy you access to LinkedIn's contact database. That's about it. Otherwise, it is on you to engage potential customers with words. You've got to stand out from the noise and earn prospects' attention using pithy, punchy provocation that sparks curiosity. But not about what you sell. Not about the value that you provide. Nope. You've got to get them curious about the possible value that you can provide. And that means first earning a conversation. And then maybe they will ask you for a meeting. Yes, Navigator gives you in-mail, which guarantees that you're going to get into the inbox. Yes, you're going to get automated lead suggestions from LinkedIn, but these are mostly lousy. You'll get news alerts about accounts that you're targeting, and you're going to get notifications about triggers when people get promoted and change jobs. But these triggers get abused by people who pounce every single time that a notification arrives. You don't want to be part of that big pile on. And of course, if you manage a team, Navigator gives you insights on how your team is actually using Navigator. But ultimately, what your money buys is unlimited search queries into the database of possible leads. Now, here's something you probably have not heard before. Some sellers are canceling their Navigator accounts. So let's talk about why. Now, it's not due to lack of training or lack of knowing how to actually use Sales Navigator. People cancel because of lack of engagement. They find good contacts, but they don't respond to outreach messages. And that is because most of us are overlooking the most important piece of the social selling puzzle. And that is having an effective and repeatable way to engage people, to get conversations started and meetings booked. Because InMail works like this. If your messages don't earn responses frequently enough, if you are basically annoying your leads that you're contacting, LinkedIn will restrict you. You will only be able to send out fewer in-mails. But the more response that you earn, the more in-mails that you will be allowed to send. And that is why most sales navigator users or premium users end up wasting their investment. They aren't earning responses. And here is why. In sales, any offer to help someone tends to push them away. Ever notice that? The more that you offer to help someone solve their problem or achieve their goal, it's almost like the more you make yourself available to help them, the less they actually want your help. Just like when you're flirting with someone, you know, the more interest that you show them, the less interest they tend to have in you. Now, before you think, no shit, Captain Obvious, hear me out for a moment. It's the same in sales. So when we sit down to write persuasively to figure out what we're going to say, here's what we tend to think. We think, what can I say right now that will get the decision maker to lean in and recognize that they have a problem? How can I be relevant enough to engage them? And that, that question, that mentality is actually the problem. Quick example, ever go on a first date where the other person started kind of posturing and you detected it immediately? Your date showed you that he or she was attracted to you, but you weren't sure yet. And then suddenly, bam, you were sure. This person was not a match. They started caring about earning your attention too much. They were trying way too hard. Very unattractive. Well, engaging a customer for the first time is exactly the same. Signaling, I want you to respect me. Or, hey, I can help you with a problem that you don't even know you have is actually the kiss of death in sales. The moment that you start caring too much or persuading, you risk being seen as desperate or needy by your prospects. It's the same with LinkedIn outreach, making connection requests, sending in mails, leaving voicemails. You know, the best connection request is actually no request. And that's because you've got to give it time. So I encourage you to slow down. And here's how. First, create an urge for the prospect to want to talk for their own selfish reason. Sales is courtship and nothing screams, I'm trying to persuade you louder than trying to establish credibility or posturing to impress somebody. So instead, consider learning how to provoke curiosity. Go to curiositycrashcourse.com to take my free crash course because here's how human beings actually work. They know why you're being so nice, giving away value or educating them. They know that you're trying to persuade. 
So instead of offering, I want you to consider earning their requests because people value more what they ask for and they value less what is offered. So the key to engaging customers is helping them want to begin persuading themselves by getting them a little bit curious, pulling them, creating intrigue. I'm gonna show you how to do it in the crash course. All the best and see you in the course.